Hey everyone and welcome to this nutrition class. This isn't gonna be some, you're gonna see a whiteboard with all a bunch of stuff coming down. This is a one-on-one -on -one or one on however many people are watching this nutrition class. It's gonna take about 25 to 30 minutes, but it's gonna give you the tools that you need to step into plant-based nutrition correctly. Just because you're vegan doesn't mean you're healthy. So if you want to learn how to transform your life, your health, spend the next 25 minutes with me and we'll get you there. We're gonna put you in a really good place. So something real quick, we're going to dive into who we are at Consciously. And the reason that we put together Consciously is because we had so many clients and friends of ours come to us, whether it was about nutrition or meditation or holistic health coaches. Um, they would come with so many questions and they would, there would be genuine interest. And so we'd fill them in like I'm going to with you today on what they needed to know, what they needed to do. But the execution wasn't there. It's different to, no to have the knowledge of something than to apply that something. And nutrition is an extremely important thing to apply. I can know what to eat all day, but if I keep going back to pizza and all those other things, I'm not going to do too well with it. So consciously is about becoming conscious of your actions and about stepping into living that knowledge, learning, giving yourself choice through that learn, learn knowledge, and then living that way and living in a conscious space. Uh, and veganism is very much something that's conscious, whether you're a vegan or vegetarian or not any of those, it is very much something that is more than just about myself. And that's what living life consciously also is. It's how does this affect my world, the people next to me, the animals, the plants, the planet, whatever and everything. How does it affect those things? And veganism is actually one of the most conscious ways to eat that there is. So if you are a vegan or vegetarian, I applaud you. If you are just thinking about it, I applaud the thought process. It is a, a super trend now in 2018 and going forward. It is something that we're gonna see more and more of. So I wanna make sure that you do it correctly. A little bit of background on myself. Uh, I actually got into nutrition via spirituality. Well, a mix of, of sports nutrition background and spirituality. I went and traveled the world, spent some time with Shaolin monks, went and lived with uh, yogic monks in a monastery, and they had a vegetarian diet. And so this was just after I had left coaching high school football and uh, being a sports or uh, strength conditioning coach. And so I had this very this perspective of well, we need to eat a lot of meat and a lot of protein to get big, to be strong, to perform as an athlete. And so when I went to the ashram and I lived there. It, was, it wasn't only just a different world, but the food, I was a little bit nervous about, hey, I need you know X, Y, and Z to be healthy, or at least I thought I did. But they started explaining things to me like, you know, there's spiritual reasons why we're eating this way, but one of the main reasons is that when you eat meat, you're intaking the stress and the adrenaline and all these other things that is caused to them during their life, unless you're getting a really high raised, you know, highly raised, well-raised meat, which is less than 1% nowadays, honestly, and even then that's unsustainable. So they, they, they started to open my eyes to different things and, and I stepped into, wait, maybe this is a little bit healthier than I thought, but I still had challenges with it. I spent a long time there and then I went back and I maintained being vegetarian for, I don't know, a year or two. And then I went back to the ashram again and it was still there, but I hadn't really jumped into what's the what's the nutrition and the science behind this so once i left the ashram for the last time uh, i went back to coaching um, sports sports performance crossfit all sorts of different high performance level things because i just like to be competitive that's who i am that's how i am and so i was like okay how can i turn my nutrition into something that is going to help me with this instead of hinder me in it so I started diving into the research. I went and got certified in a couple of different things, sports nutrition mainly because that was my main focus. Uh, I read the research, read the books, and then I met Melanie McDaniel, who's the other founder of Consciously. And she had, she had been pre-med, and during her pre-med, she had a friend who was vegan that introduced her to it. Except this friend was the Boca Burger friend, was the friend that ate all fake meats, that ate all the wrong stuff as a vegan, and she just kind of noticed that she didn't have a ton of energy. She wasn't doing too well. So she was introduced to this lifestyle and it made her interested in it because of all the other reasons. But then she saw how this person lived. And I mean, a vegetarian, you have to eat vegetables. Vegan, you have to eat vegetables. This person wasn't eating those things. Uh, so she also noticed how much confusion there is around it just because this person wasn't eating animal products doesn't mean that they were healthy 
and that spent her that that pushed her to research more and more into that finish up her pre-med decided not to become a doctor wanted to focus more on building a company where she could reach tons and tons of people instead of just one or two patients or this is or that's uh, so we met we started to put our heads together we both had very similar perspectives on nutrition on meditation on all these things consciously was born and we've combined our backgrounds and our passions in plant-based nutrition we both we live that way we have for years we love it we're healthier than we ever have been um, you know the strongest I've ever been the fastest I've ever been and the fastest recovery I've ever had is all on plant-based nutrition. So it's pretty amazing when you do it correct. All right, so let's dive into how do we do it correct, the reason that everyone's here. And to start off, I just wanna remind you why you don't wanna eat meat. So whether you are eating meat, we're gonna give you reasons why you're not, and if you're not eating meat and you, you just it makes you disgusted to even think about it, I'm gonna give you a reminder as to just, that's awesome, keep going. The number one is, is meat protein. So often people think that protein, specifically from meat, it's a complete protein, which means the full amino acid chain profile is there, which mostly relates to our protein uh, chain. So people call it really high grade, uh, high quality protein. When in fact, that's the exact opposite of what we want. If you look at our amino chain um, within our bodies and then the animals, they're very close. And if you notice animal or humans do not do well eating other humans, it makes them sick, it gives them disease. So when we eat something so similarly in, our, in their uh, protein structures, it actually causes a similar effect. So you're seeing a raise in obesity, a, raise, a rise in um, heart disease and all sorts of different things, diabetes and all these, the standard American diet uh, is causing in the US and a lot of people point to sugar, sugar, sugar. And yeah, sugar is definitely a part of it. Uh, bad sugar is definitely a part of it. Processed sugar is a part of it. But meat and specifically animal protein is actually one of the really the main causes of it in conjunction with other things because it's so bad for us. It's, it, it is, we're not meant to digest it. And a lot of people get worried, well, what about plants? Can I get the complete amino acid chain profile in there? And yes, the answer is yes, you can. Um, it, it, protein can only be sequenced and put together with its nitrogen and all these things from plants, from the soil that, you know, in the, in the plants and whatnot. Animals cannot make protein unless it's their own protein. And the whole protein sequence thing is, it's very confusing and challenging, but just know that Animal protein is one of the main reasons you don't want to eat meat. It causes, it gives, it brings an IGF-1 into the body, which is insulin growth factor one, which when we're growing up is a good thing. It's something that we naturally produce to have our bodies built into these larger humans from babies. And it helps us reproduce muscles, uh, break down muscles, rebuild muscles faster. So a lot of bodybuilders are like, I want my IGF-1 as they're pumping weights. Uh, when in reality, it also shortens the life of the cells and can cause cancers and can cause a lot of problems because of the rancidity effect that it has in our muscles and in our cells. So it's really something that we don't want past a certain point that uh, in our lives. So IGF-1 is, is a no-no, not a good thing. It's a no-no, it's a bad thing, which animal protein causes quite a bit of. It also uh, throws off the acidity level and all these other things. You throw in the saturated fat and the cholesterol and all these other things. And it's a recipe for not being healthy. There's debates whether saturated fat and cholesterol are a bad thing or aren't a bad thing. And that debate will continue to go on. I'm of the camp that it is not a good thing and it always comes along with animal protein as well. So you, that package is not good. And this is not just the red meat that everyone demonizes. It's red meat, it's lean meat specifically. Lean meats are higher in protein. Guess what you're getting higher amounts of? So it's even worse to eat the lean meats in this regard. It's in fish, it's in all these other things. So that is one of the main reasons the toxins and the GMOs and the pesticides and all, all of just like this cocktail of bad things are also going into your meat. So if you think about fish, PCBs, which is uh, different toxins, if you think about um, are they in the ocean or are they being farmed? Okay, well, if they're being farmed, people say, okay, there aren't as many, you know, mercury toxins and all those things from the ocean and being farmed. Yeah, but the problem is, is what are we feeding those fish that are being farmed? We're feeding them really low grade GMO pesticide full 
soy and, and crops and agriculture that they're not naturally supposed to eat, that, that it's not good for them, and it's just causing all sorts of different problems. So we pump them full of antibiotics. The same thing goes for any meat across the board, chickens, uh, cows, whatever it is. It's this really messed up process. Uh, and I don't want to keep going on about this because I don't want to preach to the convinced on this, but know that you're making a really good choice by cutting out animal products. I want to do, I do want to touch on dairy real quick because there are some redeeming qualities in meat. I will admit that I will, but there are not in dairy. There are not yogurt's the only debatable. And I would say that it's not, but there's no, there's nothing good about dairy. It's across the board, the acidity levels, which comes with the, the casein protein has been shown to be one of the worst things, uh, macronutriently wise, that you can put in your body. The, if you look at milk, the blood levels from the cows, because they're being milked too much, the antibiotics, the GMOs, the pesticides, it's, it's, it's a long list. Uh, it's quite disturbing, honestly, which I don't wanna get into in this video, but there's just, Cut it out. There's no reason other than, oh yeah, it's really addictive because of beta casomorphine, which is, it's an opioid. There's actually an opioid within cheese that makes you addicted to it. So the reason, there's a reason that a ton of people come to us and they say, you know, I really want to do your program, but I, I just love cheese. And I'm like, you don't just love cheese. You're addicted to cheese. And it's something that I've struggled with too. I love pizza, which there are ways of doing vegan pizza, by the way, that are somewhat healthy. Uh, and there's healthy, healthy ways, but across the board, get rid of cheese, get rid of dairy, get rid of animal products. Eggs is just full of things you don't want either. The, the, high, the high protein, same thing in there. The cholesterol is through the roof. Uh, most people cook them, and unless you cook things properly, that's, that's a whole other story too. Okay, meat and dairy aside, let's dive into how to do vegan correctly. So I'm not getting these, these protein sources that everyone thinks they need. Where do I get those over here? What you want to know across the board in plant-based nutrition is you want a whole food. Ideally, it's a whole food. You want it to be full of phytonutrients, which now that you're eating plants, plants, you'll get. You want the fiber content to be high, which if you stick to certain areas, it will. And you want it to be nutrient dense. And so we'll dive into all of those. Whole foods means it's as natu it's, it's as close to its natural state as possible. An apple is a whole food. Apple sauce, we're getting a little bit farther away from the apple flavored cereal and we're just falling off completely. So there's levels of degradation there essentially. You want to eat as much whole foods as possible. Celeries and vegetables and fruits and all these different things, they're whole foods. You know that they grow out of the ground or off a tree or wherever it may be. That's number one. You want to stick to the central whole foods. The protein sources that you need to think about are not as worrisome as most people think. We don't need as much protein as people think. In fact, if you look at the literature and the scientific community across the board, it's rare to see a protein deficiency and it's almost impossible to find one that doesn't also come along with a complete caloric deficiency. Meaning if I'm just not eating enough at all, I'm eating like 500 calories, uh, there have been cases of people being protein deficient there. But if you're eating a regular amount of food, no matter what food you're eating, it's really hard to be protein deficient. So that's number one. Don't worry about it as much. So if you're a person who weighs 180 pounds uh, and you are worried about how much protein you need. You really only need at that weight, it's, it's 0.8 grams per kilogram. And remember, per kilogram is 2.2 to a pound. So really a person who weighs around 180 only needs about 60 to 65 grams of protein. And that's on the high end, that's the RDA high end. So if I were to get 40 or something like that, at that weight, I'd be fine. I would be good essentially. So it's something that people are like, if I have my protein scoop that's got 25 grams in the morning at night, that's already just as much as I need throughout the whole day. And it's not from the greatest source either. So eating some fruits and veggies, they don't have as much, but veggies have more than people realize. You get your whole grains and your legumes in there and you're already up to where you need to be. And you add in the nuts and seeds and you're, you're golden. You're, you're great. Don't worry about protein quite as much. Okay. But if you are super worried, what I, let's throw together a little bowl real quick. A bowl, 
I love Mexican food. I live in Southern California. It's very much a part of the culture around here. So I do burrito bowls, which is I take brown rice, black beans, some saute up some onions and garlic and tomatoes, put some saltless or very well salted uh, salsa on top of that, a little avocado on top. That right there has a complete protein source. It's full of phytonutrients, of good fibers, of all these different things. It'll make you full. People say, I don't get as full on a plant-based diet. You're eating the wrong things then. You're eating a, a twig of lettuce and that's it. We want you to eat until you're full, full. So that's another thing right there, is just mix and match and your complete protein, uh, the amino chain acid, you'll get you'll get, you do not need it all from one source. People think you do, you don't. You just need the nine across the board within your diet and it's easy to get. Uh, so that's protein, the fiber levels. Now, is protein's not something that people are deficient in. Fiber is going through the roof, the level of fiber deficiencies. And one thing that people kind of get confused on is they think just essentially like the, for lack of a better term, the meat or the substance the substance within a food is fibrous. So if I juice a piece of celery, I get the juice, but I'm throwing away the fiber. That is correct within plants and animals and stuff, it's different. Uh, you don't get fiber from animal sources, which is another reason we don't want fiber. Uh, but you don't wanna get it from white bread or from white rice or these different places because it's not gonna, it's gonna be dead, it's gonna be really calorically dense and not nutrient dense. So you wanna get it from whole foods once again. So if you're getting in your whole foods every day and living in the five categories that I've named more than once, but your fruits and veggies, well, those are technically two different categories, but your fruits and veggies, your nuts and seeds, your whole grains and your legumes, so that's four, breaking it down with the fruits and veggies put together, you're gonna to get tons of fiber. So stick to that. And people do not eat enough vegetables and enough fruits. Uh, fruits have been demonized for their sugar content there is natural sugar in fruits that is also that they're also full of those phytonutrients, those fibers that we're talking about, and all these other really good things that you need. So don't be so worried about them. When I would say be worried about them is also when you're eating a ton of animal products, especially animal fat, because the whole diabetes scare, people always point the sugar, uh, point the finger at sugar, 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 especially processed sugar. Don't eat processed sugar, just whether you're meat eater or vegan or whatever, just get rid of it. If you do, it's from time to time, not in your regular diet. But something that you want to think about with the diabetes perspective is that what happens in diabetes is that there's a ton of sugar that's put into the bloodstream, 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 and there's something called insulin, which carries that sugar to the mouth of the cell to then feed it in because carbs are our number one or sugars are our number one fuel source. This is something that's very natural to the body. But what happens in diabetes cases is that it really, it, your, your receptor becomes blocked when there's higher amounts of sugar in the blood. So a lot of people just say, well, sugar's the, the devil then. But other people started scratching their head and say, well, why are these things getting blocked in the first place? Is it the sugars? And they look more closely and it's actually fats, specifically animal fats, that block the uptake of the carbs. So if you mix a really carb heavy or a sugar heavy diet with animal products and with animal fats, it's a recipe for diabetes, it's a recipe for disaster. So you wanna get rid of processed sugars and meats and just throw them out and you'll be, you'll be golden when it comes to diabetes. Now I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, medically tell you that advice, I cannot do that, but you're gonna be much better off as a result. What is nutrient density then? And we've been talking about foods that are nutrient dense this entire time. It means that whatever I eat has more nutrients, phytonutrients, vitamins, minerals, all these things than calories in them. So we tell our, our clients, eat until you're full. This is not like, if you were to follow us, we say this is not something that we have you count macros, uh, count calories, all you know these counting things where you have to weigh out your food from here and there. You don't need to do that. What you need to do is eat until you're full of the right foods and get a ton of phytonutrients into your body. A phytonutrient, now that I've said it a dozen times, is a nutrient that is found in plants that helps them detoxify 
from possible outward toxins and uh, anything that were to get into the plant that could possibly harm it. They've found that it has very similar effects in the human body. Phytonutrients help detoxify the body to a point of very high level of health. So we're consistently detoxifying the bad stuff out of our body, the environmental toxins, the food that's been there for so long, that's, that's just stored in your fat stores and all these different things. And you're adding in so many good vitamins and minerals and nutrients. So nutrient density is making sure that I'm getting more of that than calories. Uh, something like a white bread is very calorie heavy, very nutriently dead. Something like a piece of kale is extremely, extremely nutriently dense and it's really not that calorically heavy. So eat the foods, that bowl that I talked about earlier, that's gonna come with, it's gonna come with a fair amount of calories and carbs and th different things like that, but it's coming with a ton of positives as well. So it's really something that's very healthy for you. Understanding all of this, understanding that just because I'm not eating meat means I'm healthy is wrong. Understanding that just because I'm not eating meat means that I have now opened up more health into my world, but I still need to be conscious of what I eat is right. So be conscious of what you're eating. I can't stress that enough that you need whole foods, nutrient dense consistently. And you need to eat in those four or five categories that we've been talking about daily, daily. It's something that is very important and you need to get the right amounts of each of those foods. So when you go vegan or if you are vegan or if you're vegetarian, if you're vegetarian, I can't push enough. You've, you've done the hard part, get rid of the, the dairy and the eggs. Honestly, eggs was my, one of my most biggest challenges, but when I stopped, I didn't miss them at all. It's kind of strange. It just took me psychologically a while to get rid of them. I used to drink four eggs every day, uh, raw back when I was super into training and everything. But get rid of that. If you're a vegetarian, go vegan. There's no reason not to. If you're a meat eater and you're trying to, you know, come off the wall, do it. Do it this way though. Do it this way. Find a way to also gain support. Support is one of the biggest challenges our clients see. They say, you know, I at the beginning, I really thought that not eating meat anymore, my favorite cheese anymore, whatever it is was going to be the hard part about your diet uh, or about your program. But then I found out it's the people around me. The people around me really affected me. The people around me really didn't want me to change or didn't change with me. Uh, and I didn't have that support group. Uh, well, if they were with us, they did. But they, they find that the support group is extremely important. So take what we've, what we've given you today and apply it. Remember, knowledge without application doesn't help. Knowing what you should do and not doing it isn't getting you anywhere. It's really not. And which is why Consciously Nutritious, our program, our 90 day program, is designed to help you implement this. Because it honestly, it's hard to implement knowledge. It is when oh, I know what to do, but there's so many little intricacies along the way of, well, oh, what should I do here? And what should I do here? And how about this? And what about these? And there's so many questions that we can answer as nutrition coaches, we can answer for you. And so, what the main thing is, is we create a, every, every month we start a new program where we bring a group of people together. We introduce everyone to each other. It's all online. And we say, hey, we're doing this together. We are now a support system for each other. So if I'm at home and no one's there supporting me, guess who I can hop on and text or call or do whatever with? And I'll be supported. It's someone who's also trying to make those changes. It's also someone who's going through possibly some of the same detoxing that I am. So if I'm feeling not too good because I'm getting rid of all of this stuff that's been in my system for years and years, someone else is probably going through that too. And we've all been there. I've been there. It's, it's something that our bodies naturally do anyway. But if you kick up nutrient density, guess what else is going to kick up? Getting rid of bad stuff. And that doesn't always feel good. So you have that support system. Every week we give you a new class on, hey, why are we having you do what you do? And what are different things that are gonna get you there? So um, we go through what we just talked about. You're already ahead of the curve with this, watching this video. We go through supplementation. That's a big question that we see in being vegan. We go through 
we re-go through meat and why it's bad for you. We go through a lot of different things. We teach you, hey, if you're out and eating and you wanna maintain a really nutritious diet, what do you do? How do you handle social situations? How do you handle travel? How do you handle all of these different things we talk about? Um, we bring you into our kitchen and we uh, have an entire cooking video library where we show you, hey, if you're thinking breakfast, here's different breakfast things for plant-based nutrition. If you're thinking lunch, if you're thinking dinner, we give you meal timing to go along with that of, hey, start off with your morning cleanser, do all these different things to do it right, to do it properly. And so you have the videos, you have the, um, the classes, you have the support system, you have us coaching you along the way. And it's really, it's designed to help you step into a healthier you. It's designed to teach you how to do this for the rest of your life. Not just for 90 days. This is a, this is a lifestyle program. Too often, people try to shift into what's the next best way I can lose 30 pounds in 30 days. And that actually takes me to my last thing I want to talk about with you is yo-yo dieting is extremely bad for you. People don't realize this, but when you are when you're a heavier and then you lose weight and then you gain weight and then you lose weight and then you gain weight, your body's worse off when if you than if you had never done it in the first place. And the reason why is that when we lose weight and we don't maintain it, our body thinks, oh, starvation mode starvation period so it starts to react and met metabolize differently so it says okay well i need to start to store more fat because if i'm going to go into starvation mode then i need to prepare for the next time i go into starvation mode so it starts to metabolize differently and your body starts to react to dieting differently it also throws off your your, your system and it can actually cause higher Things caused by yo-yo dieting were diabetes, gallbladder dysfunction, and a few other things that are really bad for you and are really causing havoc on your system. And the last thing is losing weight too fast can cause this as well. So that 30 pounds in 30 days, if anyone's telling you that you can lose 30 pounds in 30 days, it's either a hoax and it's a dream and it's a magic pill, honestly, to be completely transparent with you, or it's something that you need to be extremely cautious of because if you don't maintain it it's that recipe for disaster it is that recipe for disaster so you have to and building a lifestyle takes time the average that we see depending on people because some people come to us and they don't want to lose weight at all uh, you know they want to get fitter and gain some lean muscle other people do want to lose weight is we see between about 10 pounds and, and 30 pounds but that's over 90 days well the there's everywhere and any, anything in between, but that's one factor. We also have you take your blood and that's optional, but what, you know, what are your insides look like? What is your heart doing? What are your triglycerides doing? What is your blood lipid profile, your C-reactive protein, all these things? What are those things doing? We want you to be healthy, not just look good. So often people just want to look good and then whatever they wanted to look good for passes and then they gain twice as much weight back. So don't be the person that yo-yo diets. If you want to join us, we would love to have you join us, which brings me to the last part of this video, which is, well, how much is it to join us? And when you think about everything that you're getting, when you think about the nutrition coaching, when you think about the classes and the knowledge that you're going to gain, when you think about the support system that you're going to have, the cooking videos, the access to us, all this stuff, it really, the price tag adds, adds up. If you were to do this with us personally, one-on-one, -on -one, it would be more than $1,000 a month. And we wanted to scale this we wanted to bring this to people on a much larger scale because we didn't want to keep just reaching our clients one-on-one -on -one like we started with so we wanted we had to drop the price we had to make this more available to everyone so it's not going to cost you thousands of dollars it's not even going to cost you five hundred dollars you can have this entire 90-day program three-month program for just 297 dollars when i tell some people that they either are like okay that's too cheap what's what's the what's the in quote catch or people are like, oh, that's, it's expensive. I don't want to pay for that. So there's there's two camps within one area. And the truth is, is that we want to make it available to everyone. So the people that are, it's too cheap, it's not. It's something that we need to reach out to a larger audience. People that it's too expensive, we have options. One of them is that every month you can pay $99. So it's three payments, $99, which adds up to $297 overall. So that makes it a little bit more bearable. And if you want... And if you can only find this here, if you pay up front online elsewhere, it's going to cost you $237, $237.
But if you pay here now, if you sign up with us now from this video, it's the only place you'll find this. It'll only cost you $207. That's paying up front. So that's just a little bit more. That's just $10 more, $9 more than it would cost you for two months worth. So it's something we want people to sign up for. It's something we want people to step into because veganism is the super trend of 2018. And we've already seen a lot of people do it wrong for the right reasons, but do it wrong. And if you add that all up every day, it's only $3 and 30 cents. A lot of people spend more on coffee every day. I want you to think about that. Is your health worth $3 and 30 cents per day? This could change your life. It could change your health forever. It, it really can. So if that's something you're interested in, join us. We want to teach you how to do it right. You'll become a part of the community. You'll gain new friends. You'll gain new perspectives. You'll gain new knowledge. You'll gain new health. And health and happiness are hand in hand. So it will really improve your life in so many ways just for the cost of coffee for 90 days straight. That's it. That's all it really is. So join us. Take this opportunity. Sign up with us now, whether you pay the three payments of $99 or you pay the upfront $207, whatever it is, join us and let us help you get to a new level of health, one that you may have never experienced before. Don't take our word for it, prove us wrong and dive in. Or it's not us wrong, I guess it's proving the rest of the world wrong that you can do this and you can do it for the rest of your life. All right, everyone, we will see you inside Consciously Nutritious.